welcome back to House and Vegetation TV's Buyer's Remorse, the house buying show with a twist. I'm your host, Megan Lavaza. Now, Tom, you've narrowed your house search down to three finalists. Let's do a quick recap. The Rambling Ranch. This ranch-style home has three bedrooms, a spacious fenced backyard, and excellent sunlight on the roof. And priced at $1,800 a month, it's right on budget. However, the location would mean a long commute for Tom, and the close proximity to an elementary school might cause problems with resale under recent updates to North Carolina's Megan's Law. The Two-Story Tudor This Tudor-style home is close to the downtown for easy shopping and access to a vibrant black market on flight attendant uniforms. It has hardwood floors throughout and high-end finishes that give it a city-chic feel. However, it's the smallest in terms of square footage, and at $2,300 a month, it's significantly over budget. The Chill Cape Cod This Cape Cod-style home is located on beautiful Smith Mountain Lake with breathtaking views of the marina. The house has the most square footage, features soundproofing, heavy-duty eye bolts, and direct drainage throughout the home. At $1,500 a month, it's markedly under budget, but Tom is hesitant about purchasing a foreclosed home. Now, let's quickly review how the game is played. Tom, you are contractually obligated to purchase and subsequently live in one of these homes with your family for a minimum of five years. That's right, Megan. We're very excited. Shut up. I'm talking. Right. Sorry. As I was saying, we have buried large deposits of uranium beneath two of the three houses. You pick one of the houses and then, after we reveal some information about one of the houses you did not pick, you will then have the opportunity to switch. Wait, what? Did you say uranium? For your convenience, we've made placards with pictures of the houses numbered 1 to 3. Tom, please pick a house. But... Tom. Pick a house. Uh, do I have to? Yes. Uh, two. I pick house two. Wonderful. Leaf, please reveal something about a house he did not pick. Ooh, house three had the uranium. That means one of the two remaining houses has large deposits of uranium underneath and one does not. Tom, would you like to stick with your first choice of house two or switch to house one? You have a 50-50 shot. Actually, Megan, it's not 50-50. You see, I had a 1 in 3 chance of getting it right in the first guess, and that hasn't changed. The probability of winning under Switch is 2 thirds. I've prepared a small presentation. This is a matrix of the possible outcomes. The first two columns show all possible combinations of an initial guess and the true location of the good house. For example, a 1 in the first column and a 2 in the second column correspond to the contestant choosing house 1 initially and the good house being house number 2. The third column shows the outcome for a player that chooses to stay with their initial guess, and the fourth column shows the outcome of a player who chooses to switch their initial guess. You can see that the player who chooses to switch wins two-thirds of the time. So I choose to switch. What? I guess we'll edit that out in post. Anyway, Tom chooses to switch his choice to house number one. Is that correct, Tom? Yes, that's correct, Megan. Let's reveal what's in house number one. What does that mean? No uranium! Congratulations, Tom! Uh, thanks. But why does that symbol look like a termite? because house number one is filled to the brim with termites. And that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for watching. <laughs>